الله نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره كمشكات فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب ضري يوقد من شجرة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء. So this is a really spectacular, pretty rare Mamluk mid 14th century mosque lamp. Uh, and is a really characteristic product of that empire that ruled from 1250 to 1517. And it, we've chosen it as object of the month for August um, as a representative example of our non-Western European holdings. So although it's made of glass, you can see it's actually really quite thick, it's quite sturdy. And yeah. you can also see all the tiny little bubbles in it that are the result of it being blown. Yes. And the craftsmen were probably intending for the glass to look transparent or yeah. completely uncoloured, but um, at that time it was very difficult to do because of all of the impurities in the sand that they used to make the glass, and it was almost impossible to remove them, which is why it's actually come out this sort of slightly brownish colour. Yeah, but thank heavens for decorating. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what we've got here are the two main bands of decoration are this beautiful calligraphic script. You can see on the top, running around the, uh, the flared neck, this blue inscription outlined in red, uh, and that is from the Quran, mm -hmm. and Tim Winter will be telling us about the meaning of that inscription later on. An even larger inscription runs around the, the main body of the lamp, and in this case, can you see, it's actually now it's got the clear glass showing through with the red outline mm -hmm. against this rather beautiful blue background. And this is very interesting for historians because it actually tells us the name of the patron. This, when translated, reads, by order of his excellency, the most noble, the exalted, the lord, the master, holder of the sword, Sheikhu al-Naziri. And uh, Sheikhu was um, originally came from rather humble probably even slave background, and he rose through the political ranks in the 1320s, 1330s, and became an Amir, or a noble, of the then ruling sultans. And in 1354, he helped to reinstate Sultan Hassan on the throne. So from that moment on, of course, he was right in there with the, uh, with the sultan. And we also know that he was um, elevated to the incredibly important mm. post of cup bearer. This emblem or blazon here shows the, the cup that he was, would have to present to the Sultan. So this role gave him an ear every single day to the Sultan. Within Islam, the act of lighting a religious building is actually considered a pious act, uh, rewarded by God. So it was actually relatively common for very wealthy patrons to commission lamps in particular for um, mosques. And we know that um, Sheikhu went even further and he actually commissioned his own mosque in 1349, uh, later followed by um, a hostel and a tomb in 1355. And it was probably for one of those buildings that this was made. That helps us date it quite specifically, um, in that we think it was made between 1349, when the mosque was built, and his death in 1357. Well, thank you very much for coming in today, Tim, and to tell us a little bit more um, about our mosque lamp. Um, would it be possible for you to tell us what this Quranic inscription on the top half means? Yes, of course. I mean, you have to imagine that even though today we experience this as a kind of gorgeous objet d'art, it's actually a functional object. Mm -hmm. And to understand the inscription uh, and the experience of somebody who is perceiving it, you have to imagine that you're in a darkened, carpeted mosque 700 years ago, and you're looking up, perhaps between your prayers, slightly distracted maybe, and you see dozens of these things hanging from the, from the distant rafters. And of course the inscription has to reflect that experience. There would be a, a beautiful oil lamp inside and it would be kind of almost magically or miraculously luminous. So to make the most of that moment, of course, in a sacred civilization, they'd want you to think of God and, and uh, perhaps to return to your prayer. Uh, so the actual inscription uh, means God is the light of the heavens and the earth. The likeness of his light is like a niche in which there is a lamp. 
And that's the first part of the famous Quranic verse, uh, which is called the verse of light, which is actually one of the sort of highlights of the Quranic text. So we have lots of other um, Islamic holdings within the museum. It's not just in the applied arts department, but also in the manuscripts and printed books department, for example. This is one of the most uh, early and complete Qurans that we have in the collection. Uh, the text itself dates from about 1372, so very close in date to when the lamp was made. Um, the bindings um, uh, are slightly later, but it's beautifully decorated. You can see here on the on the end pieces, inside the cover and on the end pieces. And so is this the this is the verse that the inscription yes. on the lamp comes from? That's exactly it. Yes. It begins here, so it's exactly the inscription we have on our, our lovely lamp. And it says, God is the light of the heavens and the earth. The likeness of his light is as a niche in which there is a lamp. Mosque lamps like these became highly desirable collector's items in the 19th century, both in Britain and uh, Europe. I think they really symbolised the uh, exotic aspect of the East and the great interest and obsession really with Orientalism. And Cambridge was no different, and the then director of the museum, Sir Sidney Cockrell, was obsessed with all aspects of Islamic art. He was a friend and follower of William Morris, and I think they wanted to really develop the collections at the museum. Under Sidney Cockrell's directorship, we were able, through gift, bequest and loans, of ceramics, of glass, of rugs, of metalwork, to start a fantastic collection that has continued to this day. <laughs> Thank you.